All right. Hi, this is Adele Michael, and I am welcoming you to the Authentic Marketing Q&A webinar. And with me is Sandra Ocasio, who is just telling, we've just been talking about the Hurricane Michael that came within 40 miles of her house and uh, the center of it. And so she is very fortunate. She has power and she and her family are okay. And they're going to go this weekend and help families that, that really got devastated by the storm. So we're very grateful that they're okay. Whew. So she's going to record and, um, and we're going to talk back and forth about some authentic marketing. But first, I want to tell you the seven steps to creating a clear and compelling message so that your, um, so that your people can hear you very clearly when you speak to them and they can know that you can help them solve their problems. So the first step is what is your invitation? What are you inviting them into? The second step is what problem do you solve? I think a lot of us in the service-based uh, industries really like talking about how we solve the problem, but we need to talk first about what problem we solve. So is it involved with health or money or relationships or feeling secure in your home when a big storm's coming through like that? And what solutions do you deliver is uh, step three. And that's um, how do you help solve those problems? What, what solutions do you offer? So if I'm looking for more energy, do I, um, I look for a health coach that, that I know can help me do that. Maybe she can address the, the uh, issues that I'm facing with my health. Uh, the next step is what is your story? Why do you do what you do? And many of us in the service-based industries do it because it's part of our story. For me, I do sales for women entrepreneurs and innovative teams because I was not able to sell. I would not sell. Um, because I thought it had to be sleazy and manipulative. And until I learned that it wasn't, it didn't have to be, it could actually tr be transformational. I didn't, I wasn't able to do it. And now I help other people um, learn to sell with authenticity and integrity so that they build their business and they help the people that they want to help. The next step is who is ready to hear your story? That, who are your people? And um, if you sell skincare, you might say, well, everybody is my people, but not everybody wants your product. Not everybody knows they, they need to take care of their skin. Not everybody wants to spend any money on taking care of their skin. So who are those people that are ready, willing, and able to invest in the solutions you provide? And where, the next step is where do you need to tell your story? And that is, uh, are you on social media? Are you out speaking? Do you have referral partners? Do you um, do some of the other marketing uh, approaches that, that work? And uh, you, need to have, you need to have those marketing approaches. You need to be in the marketplace with your message. And where do you do that? And then the seventh step is how can you be heard above the noise? There's a lot of information out there. We're getting bombarded with marketing messages all the time. And how do, you, how do you break through that and stand out so people who need your services, want your services go, oh, I need to be talking to her. So those are the seven steps. And now I'm gonna answer some questions that um, I know that you may have and um, may help you to know what the answers are. Um, so Sandra, what's the first question that we're going to answer? So today I have um, my first question to you is, what is authentic marketing? That's a great question. Um, well, we know what marketing is. It is going out into the marketplace. Um, think of a, a Middle Eastern bazaar, you know, in the marketplace where you're looking for Persian carpets or you need to buy a new camel or something like that. You're in the marketplace. Ours happens to be digital in many respects and sometimes physical, um, but we're in a marketplace. So that's what marketing is, taking your business into the market. Authentic is, means that it is truly yours. 
It is not a replica of someone else. It's not um, something that you're trying to be because you, um, you think you're supposed to be that way. It's based on your values, your integrity, and your value. What is authentic to you? And, um, and what, what's so valuable about that is that when you are authentic, when you are truly yourself, and you are able to communicate about what you do, people get that. They get when people are real, and they get when people are, are not real, not being real, trying to put something over on them. Would you agree? Yes, with that, Sandra. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we know when people um, have our best interests at heart, and I think that's the other piece. Is authentic uh, to me means I have I have services that I can offer to people, but they may not be the right fit. They may not be ready. It may not be the right time for them. It may cost too much for their budget right now, and later they can do it. Or maybe they're just not a resonance with me. So authentic means we look for a fit. As, a, as someone who's offering these services, I look for a fit. And if the fit's there, I make my offer. And if the fit's not there, then it's not there. And so I don't try to coerce somebody into uh, buying something that's not right for them. And that's the way a lot of things are sold, through uh, guilt and shame and coercion. And it's, that's not authentic. Yeah. Okay. My next question is, how can I be authentic in the market when I market? Yeah. So I think part of the answer of that is to have the self-knowledge of what is your mission? What are you trying to do? What do you want um, to offer to the marketplace? So Sandra is a, a really excellent uh, virtual assistant and she knows a lot of platforms and helps her clients with social media. So what she brings to the marketplace is, um, is the mission of helping people be online in a, a clear and effective way um, so that they don't have to worry about it. And she takes care of the details and, and uh, actually offers really good services of, well, you could try to do it this way, but this way it's going to work better. We've had those conversations many times. She's helped me a lot with that. So the first is, what's your mission? Like, what are you in business to do? So Sandra, what, I've never asked you this. What is your mission for being in business? Well, honestly, I think for me, it's more being able to help female entrepreneurs like yourself. And um, once, I, I think my, I have narrowed down my niche more as the years go by, as now I work more with female entrepreneurs that are coaches. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like, it's it's a rewarding thing in the sense where I get to learn and I get to teach because I could I'm trying to find things um, try to do things in a manner where we are streamlining them and not reinventing the wheel so if we fix it one time that's all we need to do fix it one time and then you can run with it going forward it's going to be the most efficient way you can do it without having to um, spend that much time the next time you try to do another webinar or the next time you try to do another um, course or you know whatever it is that you're trying to get get out there so I think for me it's it's been one of those things where I, I like to focus on this the digital product launches the digital um, course launches and stuff like that webinars things that I know are becoming big they are a lot of people right now I mean people are are um, accomplishing degrees over line, online. Um, it's just right. becoming, it's, that's what it, that's what the demand is right now. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm able to, to give you value when it comes down to that. Right. And, and, and I know you, you have to stay on top of technology. So you're always learning something. Oh yes. So it Absolutely. has to stay fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, it's always changing. Something's always evolving. Yeah. So, so the first um, way, the first thing to consider when you're uh, marketing it, and to be authentic when you're marketing is what is my mission? What am I here to accomplish? The second is what is my value? What do you bring to your services? So Sandra brings a wealth of expertise in um, 
computers and software and being able to do so i mean if you knew her background you'd just be blown away but how much she's she's done in her career and um and now she's staying home with family and doing the virtual assistance thing but it wasn't always like that you know you were on wall street right yeah yeah, yeah. and and running uh, payroll for casinos in Las Vegas. I mean, big, big time jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's the value you bring? I mean, you bring all of that plus your desire to, to be of service and all the things you've learned um, as a VA and all the, the platforms that you've learned. And you've had to learn a lot, I know, because people use different platforms. So you have to look at what is your value. For me, the value I bring is I'm a former therapist, I'm a peak performance trainer, I'm a coach, and I used to work in television, so I'm a communicator. So I bring all of that together to help people create their compelling message and then be able to deliver it confidently and you know, kind of get underneath the fears and doubts and, and um, lack of self-trust that so many of us have when we put ourselves out into the marketplace and resolve those so that we're like clear and people go, oh, wow, I didn't know if somebody could help me with that. So the second is value. And the third, especially when you're going marketing, if you're going to a networking meeting, you're going to give a talk, is to um, think about the other person, how you can contribute to the other person. Because making it about yourself is gonna make you shy. <laughs> it's gonna make you shy and scared. But if you make it about, the other person, it's like, well, how can I serve them? You kind of get curious and less afraid. So that's how I think um, you can be authentic in, in marketing. Does anything occur to you? No, I think I, I, it makes a lot of sense. I, I do appreciate you explaining that because I do think, and I do wonder, how am I going to stand out? How mm -hmm. can I remain authentic with what I'm doing? And how can I get that message out that I am better than the 40 other thousand VAs that are out there. I mean, it is a big market, although the online space seems to be so little sometimes because everybody knows everyone. Yes. Um, right. It is a big market. It's, you know, it's a big market out there, you know, for, I'm pretty sure it's just like the regular um, workspace, being in corporate, you can always find someone that could do your job a lot better. It's the same feeling online. So, so yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Well, I think it, and hey, Judith, um, I think that it's more than, it's more than the skill set. It's the, it's the person, right. you know, do you want to work with that person? Do you, do you feel like that person is serving you? Do they, ha do they have the skill sets and are they serving you? And um, yeah, so, I mean, I think we could talk about it a lot further, but that's from off the top of my head. That's that's what I'm what, okay what I'm the other the other question I had was why do you think there's so many people that are not authentic when they market well I think there are some several causes of that one is that we're taught to market like a strong arm marketing strong arm marketing is like I got to get in there I got to convince them I got to get their money I mean you know, that's, that's a very common way that, that people are taught to market. And we don't see that we can actually trust ourselves and trust our skill set and trust that other people will come to us if, if, we're the right, if, they're, if, they're, if we're the right service provider for them. So it's a lack of self-trust. It's a lack of training. And it's a lack of... Um, of believing that there's more to marketing than strong arming somebody. Right. Um, and it, yeah, Beth Grant has done some really good work around this. The marketing archetype alignment grid is, is her work. Beth Grant, if you want to look her up. Um, and she talks about this. She says, we're, all, we're taught to market like we're Tony Robbins and, only 5% of the population is like Tony Robbins that are like the guru star. And the rest of us are truth guides or supporters or connectors. So the connectors are great with, hey, I, I know this great product. Let me, let me share this product with you. It's there, do a lot of direct sales. Supporters are like Sandra is a supporter. She, she likes to serve. 
And um, so a lot of VAs and assistants are in that, in that uh, archetype. And then I'm, I'm in the truth guide archetype. It's like, what is your truth? I'm a coach. That's what coaching is. Let me find out, help you find out what your answer is. And I do that with a lot of my clients. It's like they, and I, my coach does that with me. You know, we think, oh, I have to do it this way, but I really would rather do it this way. And once I do it this way, it starts working better. So, and you can be a mishmash, you know, of, of all that. But I think that's one reason that a lot of marketing is not very authentic. It's because we don't think it works if it's not authentic. We're used to, I don't know, when you were in New York, they're probably crazy Eddie had long since gone, but he was uh, selling um, TVs that were for some store down in, in 42nd Street. And um, he was just crazy. I mean, his, he was just so, had so much energy and coming at you so hard. It was like an onslaught. But that's how a lot of marketing is. It's like, you got to buy this. If you don't buy this, you won't be cool. Yeah. It's like, well, you might not be cool, but you might be happy if you don't buy it, you know? Yeah. So, um, does anything else occur to you, Sandra, about why there's inauthentic? Yeah, I mean, I, th I definitely would love to un understand a little more on why. Why is it important to be... Um, authentic when you market why why would that be important and then I also kind of feel like we need to maybe touch on how it's different with like direct sales marketing and this type of marketing like I almost feel like I deal with a lot of direct sales people like I and it's yeah well and I, it's mainly because of the area I'm in um, especially being in a high condensed military area there is a big percentage of the military spouses that they, they don't go, I'm kind of like the very few that, that goes as a supporter, like you said. Um, a lot of them here are doing Mary Kay or they're selling Senti or they're selling all kinds of different things. So their marketing approach is a little different than mine. Like I feel like I'm not chasing them to work with me, but they're chasing me to buy their products. Mm -hmm. So the difference in marketing there it confuses me i don't ever want to be pushy when i'm trying to get a new client i just right. try you know and and to be honest with you most of my business has come from word to mouth 90 percent of my clients are because someone referred them to me mm -hmm. so you know it, it becomes interesting to to see that type of marketing and then i have to take a different approach when i'm marketing out to to new you know new prospects and stuff like that so that's why i would like to know why is it important to to um to remain authentic when marketing and i feel like a lot of these direct sales they're they're, they're not authentic they're kind of pushy like you're saying they become real pushy because you know that's how they're they're taught to 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 make that sale so right. um you know i think that if you could touch on that that i'd, I'd be interested to know what yeah that's a great question and let, well let me ask you do you um do you ever buy from them when you feel like they're being pushy? Well, honestly, at the beginning, when I first moved here, I, you know, I was trying to network a lot. So I would go to these uh, military spouses uh, networking events mm -hmm. and I would end up buying stuff because I felt bad or because, and it was like, then I'd come home and my husband's like, we really don't need 50 candles. Like, you know, <laughs> right. So then it just, it became a thing where I'm like, okay, instead of going to these military networking events, I just stopped going to them because I'm like, well, you know, to think of it, I would love to help them and help them find ways of them being able to streamline their own business. But at the same time, they're not my ideal client when it comes down to that because they have a different way of marketing that and, and so because I'm not able to comprehend their way of selling, I can't, I can't process how like I do with you, like I'm able to give you oh you know this could work but there's this option or there's this alternative to it so that's why it becomes confusing for me like how come these you know we have to we come it's like we come from two different worlds you know like yeah yeah and I know some very 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 successful direct sales marketers and they are not pushy they're not they're um they actually draw people to them because of their confidence. 
and because of their uh, relationship building skills. So who you're dealing with may be some of the newcomers, some people that don't have, you know, as many skills yet as, as they would, as maybe they will as they mature. Um, uh, to me, authentic marketing is a, and authentic sales is about building a relationship that serves both parties. And it doesn't, it's, it's not about you as the service provider giving it all away. It's not about that at all. You have to have self-interest, but you also have to have interest in the other person. So if somebody's trying to sell you 50 candles and you only need three, then that's really not a service to you. Right. Right. So I would chalk that up to um, not really knowing how to, how to do authentic marketing and sales, not, not knowing that it's, um, that it's actually much more effective if you're someone who sells collaboratively, like you and I get on the same side of the table and we're going to figure this out together. Yeah. That's a much, a much better way to sell than here, push, 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 push. I want you to buy this, buy this, buy this, because that means it's all about me. It's not about us. It's about me. So, um, and I bet you anything, if there were one person in that whole group of military spouses that had that approach, she probably was doing better than the rest of them. Right. So it, it, is, it, um, it, it is a little predatory. It can be predatory. And you know it when right. people are doing it that way. Um, you know, in my community, I, do a, I have done a lot of networking. I'm not doing quite so much now, but I know a lot of people. And I know the ones who are the predators, the aggressive ones, yeah. and everybody else does too, you know, and they have their place and other people have their place. Yeah. Um, but it's not, you know, for many people, it's not our style. And I'm so glad you brought it up because if you think it has to be your style, you won't do it. And yeah. so a lot of people stay out of the marketplace because they don't want to be aggressive. You don't have to be aggressive. You can be yourself. Right. And you don't have to be an extrovert either. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have to be an extrovert. No, introverts actually can be better marketing people than, than extroverts because extroverts are out there like, let's have a party. And yeah. introverts are really listening. It's like, what do you need? Yeah. yeah. So does, is that helpful at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. It does help. Okay. Let's see. I think we have one more question that you have, and then we can ask Judith if she has any. Actually, I think that was all the questions I had. I'm sorry. I think that was it. Um, no, yeah, that is all of it. Yeah. So Judith, do you have any questions? No, I didn't. I was just really curious to see um, what your show is like and what's going on. And I thought then questions might come for me later. So I'm just... I'm just now checking in and um, I'm very excited to see what you're saying with this beautiful young woman here. And um, I'm sort of at the, you know, the end of my business days being 76. I'm really looking forward to maybe retiring sometime in the next five years. But my, my business has been an amazing experience. And um, I feel like I have changed and grown so much because of it so i just feel like um i'm still a student i'm still yes. learning so i'm i'm just looking to see what i can learn from you guys right now oh good well this is um sandra acacia she's my one of my virtual assistants and she helps me um with my online marketing and she is sitting uh in is it navarro florida yeah. Navarre, Florida. Navarre, Florida, which is 40 miles from Panama City, which Michael, Hurricane Michael, just visited yesterday. So we're so grateful that she and her family and her house are all okay. Yeah. So, hey, Terry. Hi, again. Hi. How are you? Hi, good. good. Do you have any questions about authentic marketing? Um, not yet. Okay. Well, we're, we're just beginning to wrap up. So oh, it, am I late? Yeah, we started at four. Oh, well, I had the wrong, I'm so sorry. That's okay. 
um, I'll send you the, the replay. You can watch the first part Perfect. of it if you would like. Thank to. you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, if nobody has any other questions, I would like to just remind you that I'm doing um, my Choosing Abundance event, a two day authentic marketing retreat um, next Friday and Saturday in Durham. And I just do still have room for one or two more. We have a really great group of people gathering. And um, if you or someone you know would like to attend, it's live and in person. Um, and Sandra just put in the chat the uh, URL, which is www.choosingabundanceevent.com. Choosingabundanceevent.com. Make it even bigger. And um, if you go there, you can read all about what we're going to do. We're going to go through the step, seven steps of authentic marketing one by one by one so that you come up with a clear and compelling message for your business. We're going to talk about, we're going to do confidence practices. And um, well, I just know that everyone's going to leave in a different place than when they came in. Um, in a, a better place, a more confident and clear place about what they're, what they're marketing. Um, and if, if you go there, you can see that there, um, you can have a, a strategy session with me or you can go ahead and sign up for it. Um, and if you would like just a strategy session with me, I'm at um, www.abundancebreakthrough with Adele.com. It's kind of long, abundance breakthrough with Adele.com for a, a, um, a complimentary strategy session. So unless there's anything else, I want to thank you for being here. And uh, those of you watching the, the replay, thank you for watching. <laughs> and um, I, I guess the last thing I would like to say is the best marketing technique is being yourself and being out there, creating relationships and offering your services to others. Yeah. So please go and have a great time doing that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay. okay bye. Maybe we'll stop the recording. <laughs>